Hello and welcome everyone to my cold conversion Karen Golem Zombie Ascendant. This build features permanent minions that can chill and freeze, which makes it great for Sanctum and mapping, while also being a decent bosser in its own right. The reason why we're playing this on the Ascendant is because this particular type of build hits a sit certain sweet spot for the Elementalist specialization. To be specific, the exposure we inflict reduces the effective resistance by an additional minus 20%, as well as giving us an additional golem. Both of these would be ascendancy notables in their own right if we were to play this build on the Necromancer. In addition to that, we also take the Necromancer ascendancy, for obvious reasons, and we're rounding off the build with either the Dead Eye or the Guardian ascendancy. Personally, I'm a fan of the Dead Eye Ascendancy because the Tailwind that we're getting, while very similar to the Radiant Crusade that the Guardian gives you, is permanently active, whereas the Radiant Crusade from the Guardian is conditional and does have um, some downtime, at least it did when I was testing this and playing this build. You can of course try it out if you're if you're interested in how it feels for yourself. Now, in terms of leveling, this build is a bit different than our usual builds, because we are of course starting out as a Zion, which means that we are starting out in the center of the Atlas passive tree. Which means that we need to spec into some spell damage early on, get ourselves Harrier, um, and an extra point life and strength, specifically for the strength, so we can um, start using Vitality later on. Outside of that, we're pretty much just moving up towards the starting location of, of the Witch in order to get our hands on some minion notables. In terms of the skills, we're going to start out with Spark, which we can buy pretty much from the get-go, right after killing Hillock. We're linking this with Onslaught and Pierce. We also get ourselves a Ray Zombie, which we are at least initially just leveling and not using, because without um, Vitality, which we will get later on, the recovery of the zombies is pretty bad, and they would end up dying often, which is why I can't really recommend early usage. But leveling them is definitely a good idea. We're also using Orb of Storms, uh, linked with Summon Phantasm and added Lightning Damage, in order to get, well, more damage out of our Sparks casts, and to get some um, blockers in the form of Phantasms. You should also consider buying the Rejuvenation Totem as early as possible. In general, the Rejuvenation Totem um, is a great boon, specifically for this build, because our minions are a bit weaker than they would be on the Necromancer, because we can't invest into minion notables early on. As I said, get it early though, because if you wait, the gem level will be higher, and so will be the strength requirement to the point that we might not be able to use this skill at all. If you can't manage to get your hands on um, a blue-green-green -green setup, you should forego using Onslaught, because Spark without Pierce early on is pretty bad in my opinion, but obviously you can try out for yourself and do what fits your preferences. Once we manage to get to the caverns, we swap out Spark with Absolution which we then link to Onslaught and added lightning damage. We also put the Ray Zombie and the Orb of Storms into one setup. Obviously you can start using Ray Zombies as soon as you get Vitality because this is pretty much when they start having enough recovery to actually um, survive for more than, than half a minute. Before that, as I said, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't use them personally. We're also getting ourselves Flash Offering, this is pretty self-explanatory, it's just attack, cast and movement speed, which is very powerful early on. 
and comes in handy later once we um, once the offerings also apply to us. There aren't too many changes in in Act Two. Um, we're we're tossing the Orb of Storms because it's no longer useful for us, and you can link race zombies with minion speed, which you can get um, in the later portions of Act Two. We're also getting ourselves Herald of Purity because it gives us more damage and also allows us to summon um, additional minions which help with clear speed and um, are also blockers for us which is nice. In Act 3 we essentially get a couple of new skill gems, um, namely the um, Ray Spectre which you should um, use pretty much from the get-go. I recommend you go back to Act 2 and get the Carnage Chieftain. The uptime of the frenzy charges that it provides won't be optimal early on, but that doesn't really matter. It's just more damage, essentially. No reason to to forego that. We are also replacing the Herald of Purity with Determination. Make sure to not overlevel Vitality and Clarity, though, or you might not be able to use Determination. And last but not least, we're also getting our first curse. We're obviously using Conductivity. Because Absolution, while dealing physical damage, converts half of it into um, into lightning damage. And we can increase this conversion further by also linking Absolution to physical to lightning, which you can get in Act 2. Now, obviously, you might not have access to a four link in Act 3 already. If you don't, well, just wait until you get one. Progressing into Act 4... Um, means we can now get our hands on um, a golem. And I recommend you getting the carrion golem. This increases our our um, absolutions damage, at least the damage from the sentinels that we're summoning with absolution. That's pretty much it for the most part. Um, you can, if you find a fall link, uh, a second fall link, you can link the um, zombies to physical to lightning, right? Gives fizz as extra lightning damage and obviously converts some of the damage which we then can, can abuse because we're obviously using conductivity. The last change we're pretty much making is um, the end of Act 4 technically when we um, are being offered the Spell Echo Support Gem. You should use this over um, this, this setup over one with Onslaught because at this point your, your hit base damage um, will have fallen off to the point where you probably won't even get any kills anymore and you, the onslaught uptime will probably be pretty poor anyway. Yeah, as I said, this this is pretty much it. This is the setup where we're going to use until um, like all the way through the rest of the campaign and even into the early maps. and even into early maps. In terms of the Atlas passive tree, I recommend, um, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, we're trying to make our way up to the um, to minion notables. I recommend um, getting the ones closest first. That includes Lord of the Dead and obviously Enduring Bond. Um, later on, we're also getting, um, we're also putting points into the defensive nodes. So we're getting ourselves Indomitable Army, Sacrifice, and even the Minion Defense Mastery that gives our minions life recovery on minion death. This is important in order to beat um, certain bosses like Gravisius, Dominus, and obviously Piety in in her monstrosity form, although that fight will be very difficult for us in general, because we simply do not have access to Command of Darkness, and as such, our minions aren't really rest kept while we're leveling. This is an issue for those specific bosses, but um, it's manageable in my opinion. In general, in terms of the Labyrinth, I wouldn't go there too early. Um, in the campaign because our first two points as you can see 
are literally just intelligence and an additional passive skill point. So there's no real reason not to wait um, until Act 4 or maybe even Act 5, depending on when you feel comfortable doing it. This is a bit annoying, right? Um, early power will be a bit diminished in general on this build. But we're making up for it um, on the next two points that we're getting. Um, in terms of additional nodes, we are investing into the um, life and energy shield wheel. Because we're trying to make our way to spiritual aid, which increases um, our damage by applying the minion damage we find on the tree and also on items to the hit based component of absolution. In general, and this is one of two ways of increasing our own damage, so the hit based component of the absolution. Um, skill. Spiritual aid is, is available from roughly Act 4 onwards. What we can also do, what I heavily recommend, is to get wands with flat lightning damage to spells. And there are essentially two ways of making those. One is a vendor recipe, in which you can use a topaz ring, a magic wand, and an alteration. And the other one is using a specific essence, namely an essence of torment. So if you can get your hands on either one of those, use them. It is best to actually get this as soon as possible. So if you have access to it in Act 1, go ham, get it. The um, damage difference is enormous. You should be able to get it somewhere around Act 5, uh, maybe a bit earlier, depending on how um, many enemies you're killing, how fast you're, you're mapping. Um, depending on how fast you're going through the campaign. In the following acts, we're essentially trying to get our hands on um, more minion notables, such as Righteous Army, the Aura um, cluster here with Sovereignty, so we can level up Vitality and Clarity. Personally, I also like to get Arcane Will, because the Mana Regeneration allows you to drop Mana Flasks, either for the most part or entirely, depends obviously on things like Clarity, um, what level of Clarity you have. But yeah, this is a personal preference, you don't have to spec this, right? It's just, it's just quality of life in my opinion. In the next act, you should get enough points to um, rearrange your tree a little bit. Right? We're specking out of minion attack and card speed and some some points of the um, of the ES and and uh, max life wheel because this this overall is a more efficient allocation of passive points, and we're investing that into the death at human wheel. This gives us an extra Spectre and an extra Zombie. The Zombie isn't that important early on, but the Spectre is obviously very powerful. What you should be doing is, after getting it, is just go back into Act 6 and get yourself a Host Chieftain. This will give you access to Power Charges, which are not that great early on, but, you know, extra damage is extra damage. So I heavily recommend you take that. You can now also go for your... Um, for the second lab, I recommend you do that as soon as possible, and then obviously get the Necromancer specialization. And either um, Dexterity or um, Strength Intelligence, this depends on, on which one of the two um, specializations you want to be using, and potentially on, on um, attribute requirements from gems and um, items. But yeah, the Necromancer um, specialization is very powerful, right? Um, it allows offering skills to affect us, meaning that the Flash Offering will now grant us movement speed, which is really nice for making our way through the campaign. Obviously, it gives us minion damage, minion attack and card speed for every aura, and area of effect for us and our minions on consuming corpse, which is what we are pretty much doing all the time. 
So yeah, really powerful overall. Um, the next two acts aren't that um, interesting in terms of leveling. We're just getting ourselves some defensive nodes, right? So life, life and ES and um, uh, armor ES region and some stats. After that, I recommend you getting Grave Pact for, um, for more damage. Technically, the accuracy rating is the greatest for us just yet, because Absolution, or rather the Sentinels, do not need accuracy because they're casters, so they don't really um, use their melee attacks or their attacks in general, I suppose. But since we want to use this later on anyway, it's sensible to spec into it right now because of the um, proximity on the passive tree. And the last points we're going to invest into are obviously, um, well, more life and some aura nodes. And we're using this aura node because uh, we've already specced into the passive point right next to it. Whereas with this aura wheel, the influence one, we would have to invest an extra four points just to reach it, which is obviously early on kind of a lot. And you can keep playing Absolution um, well into maps. The point of transition is once you're able to afford at least two clay shapers, right? So um, in order to, to actually start using golems, we need at least two of these. Optimally, we would also like to have the um, the Primordial Jewels plus an Animal Stone, but those are a bit hard to come by, especially in the League Start scenario, simply because of the changes that were made to them in this League, meaning that they are now only dropping in the Delft Cities, meaning, again, on day one, they're very expensive and not really accessible. You can still play this build without the, um, without the Jewels, it's still um, decent enough to carry you through um, early maps. Or you could stay on Absolution. That's that's a possibility as well. Absolution is obviously a very powerful skill. Just make sure to um, you also get the Golem Commander as early as possible if you're actually transitioning to the Golem version, right? Because the extra the extra golem is obviously important. Everything else is pretty cookie cutter. Um, it's compared to the Act 10 version, it's more life, right? Um, more aura nodes. The number, the maximum number of golems, and the Ravenous Horde. Personally, I find this really, really nice early on because it gives our minions movement speed, which we early on don't really have, and movement speed is very important for melee minions. For, um, for clearing and even later for effective DPS. And it also gives all minions the ability to um, get Onslaught on kill, which is also powerful. Right? More attack speed, more, more movement speed. Definitely recommend this. In terms of other items, um, I can recommend the Skullhead early on. It's a very cheap item. It gives us resistances and our minions a chance to block attack and spell damage and provides them with a very powerful life recovery when they block. Much more powerful than what we are getting additionally, which is the Decay Ward. Um, yeah, the item doesn't offer that much else, right? But in terms of minion survivability, this is enough to, to get you into red maps. The only thing that can really damage your minions at that point are dots, and you, can, you should be able to manage. Outside of that, we're obviously looking for Corrupted Six Link um, optimally. In general, we're looking for items with max life and resistances. If you can't get a Corrupted Six Link, a Tabula obviously will do. But that, um, that will obviously cost you defenses. Right? On our jewelry, we're looking for the Elemental Resistance, Minion Elemental Resistance Crafted Modifier. You can put this on literally all three your items and it's very powerful because it allows you to 
get a lot of elemental resistance for yourself and obviously for your minions as well. Keep in mind, we do not have the minion elemental resistance from Command of Darkness. And, and getting your minions um, elemental resistance kept is important to mitigate damage. Especially dot damage early on. In terms of the gloves, we're using Grip of the Council, um, and not the Triad Grip, not in, not early on at least. The reason we're doing that is because the Triad Grip is a bit devoid of, of modifiers outside of the conversion, right? Whereas the Grip of the Council gives us Strength, Max Life, Cold Resistance, our minions, Cold Resistance, and first is Extra Cold Damage, which is functionally similar to, um, to the Fizz cold conversion that we're getting later and all of that at the cost at minion uh, the minions losing 10% move speed which is not great but manageable the flasks are pretty self-explanatory we're getting a life flask of ceiling roomies concoction as soon as you can afford it quicksilver flasks and then could be an elemental flask, so like a sapphire flask, could be uh, something different like a quartz flask in order to get hazing, and of course an amethyst flask to get as much chaos resistance as possible. In terms of utility minions, our Spectres, I already mentioned earlier, um, the first two you're getting are the Carnage and the Host Chieftain, so we can use Frenzy and Power Charges for minions. The other two are the Primal Cr Crush Claw and the Pale's Wrathum. The Crush Claw gives a debuff that makes it so that enemies take more cold damage. And the Pale's Wrathum applies a debuff that increases generic damage taken. The reason why I would um, recommend the Primal Crush Claw first is because it is a lot more tanky than the, than the Seraphim. Your Seraphim early on can sometimes get itself into situations where it dies. Both the Crush Claw and the Seraphim love to charge into large packs of enemies. Even though we're using the Skullhead every now and then, your minions can still take too much damage. And in general, the, the Seraphim is more likely to die than a Crush Claw. But you can obviously try it out for yourself. The Crush Claw you, you can get from Harvest, specifically the Blue Plants, whereas the Pale Seraphim is from Beyond. In case you can't really get these early on, you could also ask another summoner if they can help you out. Um, in order to do that, you have to join the Global Channel 666. Maybe someone is online that has these specters that allows you to come into the hideout to summon them. In terms of our animate guardian or other utility minion, we're looking at Relentless Fury, which gives it a culling strike. Now this isn't the most reliable culling strike because it's only on your guardian. Um, your guardian sometimes misses its attacks and it also sometimes simply doesn't attack the enemy because it might not be in range for example or because there might be a different target but it's still a calling strike we're giving him leer cast because this increases the damage our minions do we're giving it tomb fist with a murderous eye um, jewel socketed because this allows our Guardian to intimidate enemies, which increases attack damage, which is what we're dealing. On the on the Murderous Eye Jewel, you want to get something like Blind on hit and block spell damage, but if you don't find something like this for, for little currency, can be any. And it's really about the Intimidate. We're also getting Wake of Destruction. Um, this gives our Guardian Lightning damage, which allows it, in theory at least, to shock. It's not the greatest early on. Um, it also drops shock ground while moving, which can be nice. Sometimes enemies do step into the shock ground, which increases damage taken, obviously. In terms of the body armor and the shield, we're getting a specific combination, namely Zandathesis and Kassok, which pretty much chaos caps our guardian. 
giving it some lightning damage and also allowing it to create consecrated ground when it blocks. This in itself would be powerful, right? Consecrated ground um, heals allies that are on it. Well, we're turning this into a weapon, also giving the Guardian broken faith. And this lets our Guardian transform the consecrated ground into profane ground. Meaning we don't get the heal, but instead enemies that are affected by the profane ground now get a flat plus 1% crit strike modifier and minus 10% to all resistances against them, which is obviously really powerful. In terms of skills, um, as I said, we're now using the Karen Golem. You can fit the support gems to the colors of the chest that you're that you're getting, right? So it's 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 not a catastrophe to not um, get this this exact color setup as long as you can get a set of useful support gems that you can socket into it. Everything else is pretty self-explanatory. Termination, Molten Shell, obviously, right? Because we need a guard ability. You want to switch to Bone Offering? Well, it kind of depends on, on how you feel about it. This is um, about preferences. I usually switch around, I don't know, somewhere, somewhere in, in, in yellow maps usually when the damage becomes overwhelming for both me and my minions. Other skills we're using, obviously, Hatred, Precision, um, Link to Generosity, this is uh, very important um, for the later versions too, obviously a Frostbomb, to get the exposure going. And our utility setup with Raise Zombies, at least for now, in the gloves, and an additional setup with Spectres and Convocation. And this is pretty much it for the League start version. For the mid-league, there are some changes that we made that are noteworthy. So we're now a pure energy shield base. The reason for that is because we can scale energy shield and also scale mana with intelligence, which we already get quite a lot from um, from the passive tree. This is because we're obviously mostly specking points into the north of the passive tree where most passives simply are in. And the reason this is interesting is because we, we need mana, a lot of it actually, in order to fit all the auras because we're technically speaking an aura stacker. Not for us, not for other players, but for our minions. That's why getting a lot of mana and a lot of uh, mana reservation efficiency is key to making this into a very powerful build. The other reason is that we want to be using CI. Um, CI sets our life to one. In turn, we become immune against chaos damage. And this is powerful because not only do we completely eliminate a type of damage, it also allows us to completely ignore Chaos Resistance. And this is important because ever since Calandra, the modifier pressure is immense. Not having to spec into having to get items with, let's say, 3 or 4 Chaos Resistance modifiers tremendously helps us refocus our, our efforts towards procuring modifiers that we actually want to have and as such I can heavily recommend the the S based version with CI. There's one more reason and that is due to a specific type of item or rather two items the skin of the lords and the skin of the loyal. These items allow us to scale our global defenses which scales both energy shield and armor at the same time while also giving us plus levels to socket gems, which scales our minions. In general, the most potent way to scale minions is via levels. Levels give minions base life, base damage, 
and accuracy, which is very important because it allows us to use lower levels of precision, preserving some of the mana we would otherwise have to invest. And also, at least later on, ignore minion accuracy on the passive trait. In terms of the gloves, we've now switched to the Triad Grip. As I mentioned earlier, the Triad Grip allows you to convert physical damage to elemental damage or chaos damage, depending on the socket color. Now, optimally, we would like to have four green sockets, so we could convert all of our damage to cold damage. But because most green skill gems that we use are offensive auras, and we want to link the offensive auras to generosity, it is actually damage optimal to go with a three green, one red setup. In terms of the other items, um, we're now obviously on, on a pure ES base. Um, getting maximum life is completely useless, so we should, um, should ignore that modifier completely because Chaos Inoculation always sets it to 1 anyway. In terms of our tree, there's definitely one noteworthy addition, which is this specific type of large cluster jewel. This is an eye level 84 cluster with 12 passos. And these are pretty much the most important addition to all higher budget minion builds that exist in the game. As of right now. What we're looking for is a cluster jewel with increased passive effect, minion attack and cast speed, maximum energy shield and hopefully another modifier that is useful for us. Life region isn't the greatest, instead you should try to get an attribute or a resistance. This obviously heavily depends on the amount of currency you have at your disposal. Making them yourself is a bit cheaper, but also somewhat obnoxious. I talked about this in a, in a different video, in case you're interested in what the crafting process can look like. I'm going to link the video in the comments below. And personally, I bought those large cluster jewels that I used in this version and the later one, my final version too, because I simply couldn't be bothered, to be honest. In terms of the medium cluster jewel that we're using, we're getting one with Renewal that gives our minions regen and the chance to deal double damage when they're on full life. And also Feasting Fiends, which is nice because this saves us a point that we would otherwise have to invest into a defensive minion mastery, which later on becomes an issue because we essentially have more minion, or we would like to invest more points into minion defensive masteries than we have actual um, defensive minion wheels to choose from. There's one more item I'd like to mention, and this is the Rubus Circlet I have right here. This is something I can recommend getting as early as possible, pretty much as, as soon as you can afford it. Um, obviously this is a bit expensive, right? The fractured plus two level of all minion skill gems. Um, you probably won't be able to buy it. Um, so what you have to do is, is getting a Google circlet with four modifiers, one of them being the minion skill gem modifier and then fracturing it. In case you can't find one with four modifiers, you can always remove additional modifiers, specifically suffixes with Eldritch currency, specifically the Eldritch Orbs of Annulment, which allows you to to deterministically remove suffixes so you don't accidentally remove the prefix. And then all you need is, as I said, some currency to buy some fracturing orbs and get lucky. The reason this is so powerful is because not only can we can we start crafting on this immediately, um, what you see here is crafted with a deafening essence of loathing, which is very important because we need the mana reservation efficiency. I didn't roll that much. As you can see, this literally just has some energy shield prefixes and I slapped on um, a shitty fire resistance modifier because this is all we need early on. This in combination with the Eldritch Implicit, um, specifically the Eater Implicit, allows us to fit an additional aura, specifically Discipline, which is important to get your effective um, hit pool up. 
This requires rolling with um, Eldritch Icars. It's fine to use the cheapest one. Um, you will probably need something around 100. This modifier is a bit um, nasty to roll. The other modifier, the Searing Exarch one, is not that important. You can get minion life, you can get minion movement speed. Or you could get curse effectiveness. Um, anything pretty much goes. Wouldn't wouldn't um, spend that much currency on the Searing Exarch, is what I'm trying to say. And while this seems a bit overblown for a, you know, medium budget or, you know, mid-league approach, the great thing about this item is that it scales so well into the late game version. Because what I did was craft this helmet early on with the fracture, and then later on craft it on the very same helmet again. And I'm going to show you that later. Now, in terms of our utility minions, we still have three specters, meaning there aren't any changes in regards to that. What did change is the animated guardian. Um, you could let it keep the relentless fury it already has or give it one with a corrupt implicit, such as increased area effect. In terms of the helmet, we're going with a crown of the tyrant. This allows our guardian to lower the resistances of nearby enemies and also give our minions um, added cold damage. Just make sure to change the sock color to green before you um, give it to the guardian. For the gloves, we're giving our guardian gravebind this gives our Guardian Chaos Resistance and will allow our Guardian to actually count kills of nearby enemies as its own kills, which is very important for the next two items. The most important one is the chest, a specific chest with Crusader Influence and the Explosion Mod. This is tremendously powerful. This allows our Guardian to clear essentially entire screens with the help of of Gravebind. Without it, obviously, it doesn't work. But as long as you have Gravebind, all kills close to the Guardian counts as its own kills, and as such your Guardian can start clearing entire packs even if just one or two enemies die. This mostly depends on your budget though, and of course the availability of these chests, especially early on. The other noteworthy item in relation to Gravebind is Legacy of Fury because it allows our Guardian to Scorch nearby enemies. Scorch is a modifier that lowers elemental resistances. Um, the base value for the boots is 10. This gets increased by one of the modifiers by at least 30%, meaning they end up having at least minus 13. This can go up all the way to minus, to minus 15 if you get one with exactly 50% increased effect of Scorch, although I don't recommend getting getting that one early on because it's a bit more expensive. It doesn't really matter that much. And the other interesting modifier is the chance to burn surrounding enemies if the Guardian kills a Scorched enemy, which is pretty much always because nearby enemies are always Scorched. So this in combination with the explosion modifier from the chest will tremendously increase your clear speed can only recommend this so much. If you've never tried it, you should. And last but not least, we're also giving our Guardian a new shield because the Broken Faith is useless without um, a source of consecrated ground, which we now no longer have. What you can get your Guardian is, essentially this shield is a high space. It allows our Guardian to inflict brittle on enemies when it blocks their damage. And Brittle gives 2% crit against flat crit, that is, 2% flat crit chance against affected enemies, which is very powerful. We can also put additional modifiers on this item, such as the ability to shock attackers when we block, which is a shaper modifier, and increased effect of non-damaging ambulance, which will scale the brittle effect, the shock effect, and even the scorch effect. So this is a very, very powerful shield. Um, they can be a bit limited in terms of the influences they have, 
Obviously, you optimally want either a Shaper or Redeemer influenced one, roll one of the modifiers, and then use an Awakener's Orb to make it. Um, but sometimes you can't get your hands on them. In that case, I would prioritize the Shock in terms of the modifiers. One important thing to note is that in terms of the Guardian, we don't want to use the um, the Superior, so the standard version, but instead the Anomalous, because the Anomalous Guardian gets increased area of effect per quality. And this is very, very useful in combination with the Explosion um, Chest and Gravebind, because as I mentioned earlier, right, this allows our Guardian to essentially clear entire screens, even if only few enemies die. So, can heavily recommend this. It's also a bit cheaper than the Divergent one, right? And the survivability is still pretty good if you um, build everything proper. There's one more thing I forgot to mention, and that is um, in regards to the items. You should now be able to um, get yourself Forbidden Flame and Forbidden Flash. Um, luckily, because very few people actually use the Elementalist specialization on the Scion, those usually tend to be cheap, a couple divines at most. And it's obviously very important because this will give you access well, to the Elementalist specialization, so an additional golem and additional minus resistances. I think that's pretty much it for the medium version. The endgame version that I ended up building um, is a bit different. The most notable difference is that we transitioned the zombies into the main setup, meaning that essentially we are operating both the Karen golems and the zombies as effective fivelings in the same setup though. And this is superior to, let's say, just using Karen golems without the zombies, right? which we can quickly calculate as you can see. This is definitely inferior in terms of damage. In order to transition the zombies into the main setup, and for the, in order for this to make sense, we need to do. We need to make certain changes to our build, though. Most notably, we need to replace the the clay shapers with a proper minion wand and a proper minion shield. The wand, um, what we're looking for is a minion wand, convoking wand eye level 76 to 82, that has a fractured damage modifier. It doesn't have to be the incursion mod, which is what you're seeing here, although this is obviously the most powerful mod, at least for this type of build. Any fractured damage modifier will do, right? and at that point we have to roll this with a specific combination of fossils namely bound, corroded, metallic, and shuddering. If you use a fractured wand that is eye level 83 or higher, you have to replace the bound with a jagged. And this is because at 80 level 3 we get a new modifier that is then blocked by the jagged fossa. You usually end up with uh, some usable minion modifiers if you use the bound one. So if you roll a, a wand with an item level of 82 or lower, but not necessarily with the increased critical strike chance. So you might end up having to annul one of the suffixes and then re-roll them with a meta mod. Prefixes can't be changed and then reforge crit via harvest. In terms of the shield, we're looking for fractured minion damage, and we're rolling this with a combination of bound, pristine, and dense fossils. And this is because it gives us the highest chance of getting both maximum elemental resistances, minion crit, and plus one level of minion skill gems. It's a bit more complex than I just made it sound, um, so I'm probably going to do a short video on, on how to roll these um, minion shields probably tomorrow or the day after that. And I will of course link that video in the comments below. 
In terms of the helmet, I already mentioned, I essentially used the fractured helmet I made earlier and simply re-rolled um, the modifiers. Once again, I used a deafening essence of loathing to introduce the mana reservation modifier, rolled for a decent additional suffix, in this case fire resistance, got a decent percentage base ES modifier for the prefixes, then put on suffixes, can't be changed, and did an Ashling slam. I was hoping for the maximum of raised zombies and skeletons as a Veiled modifier, I didn't get it, instead I got Dex and Int, so I just crafted the maximum number of raised zombies instead. In terms of Implicit, it's important to get the Tier 1 Mana Reservation Efficiency modifier. This is obviously expensive, but it does allow us to get all the auras that we want to be using. At least in combination with um, two other additions, namely a small cluster jewel with increased mana reservation efficiency of skills, which is further boosted by increased passive skill effect, and a and an impossible escape, specifically the one that allows us to allocate points around Supreme Ego, which then gives us charisma and an additional point of reservation efficiency. And if you get all of those. We can then fit our final aura, which is Val Haste, which gives our minions even more attack speed, which is nice, but not the actual selling point. In my opinion, the increased movement speed is much more important. Not only does that help with clearing maps, for example, a lot quicker, it also is effective damage in, in most bossing scenarios because our minions obviously need to close the gap as soon as possible and while the carrion golems can can leap slam our zombies cannot in general i think minion movement speed is a very underrated um well form of effective damage increase for melee minions so yeah i can definitely recommend haste for melee minions at least for ranged minions probably not so much in terms of our other items We're now using a skin of the loyal, um, a specific skin of the loyal, one with two corrupt implicits, namely plus two levels of socketed minion gems and plus one level of socketed gems. Mind you, just like the skin of the lords, this one has fixed socket colors, meaning you need to buy one with the right colors because they cannot be changed in any form or shape. If you can't find one with the right colors um, or you can't afford this specific one, I would try to get one with plus two level of socket minion gems because those are pretty common and a lot cheaper as well. In terms of the jewelry, um, we're looking at a plus two level amulet and double energy shield rings and belt. The belt is relatively easy to make. All you need is a free prefix and then you just slam a Crusader's Exalted up and hope that you hit percentage based maximum energy shield. For the rings, you need to have a free prefix and a free suffix because you need to put on cannot roll caster modifiers in order to make the percentage based maximum energy shield modifier more likely. This is not necessary on the belt because there aren't any caster modifiers that you can actually roll with this. I already made a video in the past where I go over crafting jewelry including the rings and the plus two amulet. It's the same one where I also talk about crafting the clusters and the plus two helmet. In case you're interested, link is in the comments below, as I mentioned earlier. The last change that we made um, to our items directly is probably this um, elegant hubris. Um, elegant hubris is a gem that you can socket into your tree that then transforms the small passives into Price of Glory, which give you literally nothing, and transforms the notables into Eloquent Hubris specific notables that are influenced by the number of coins that is specified on the um, Eloquent Hubris. And they can be 
very powerful. As you can see, Slumlord, for example, gives us 80% increased damage. Whereas Axiom Wardens gives our minions 80% increased max life. And we can also get Eternal Resilience from it, which gives us an Endurance Shot every second if we've been hit recently. This does come at a cost, losing some intelligence, um, roughly 60, and also 10 strength. And it can also be a bit um, tedious to get those. Um, this actually wasn't very costly, I think it was like 30k or so, so but there aren't that many in the, um, in the market usually, so we have to be lucky to snipe one. In general, if you want to experiment with Elegant Hubris and um, the associated notables a bit more, there is a Timeless Jewel Finder in Path of Building itself, where you can essentially look for spe specific nodes, like um, the ones that I already showed you, Ryan, and you can search for, not just for the names of the notables, but also for the, um, for the tooltips. Meaning you can search for Axiom Warden and Slumlord by typing minion or min, as I just did, fine. Um, and then adding it to the list of desired nodes. And then, well, at least you're supposed to be able to generate a list of of elegant hubrises. This doesn't work for me right now. I'm not sure if I'm doing something wrong. They changed something about it or if it's simply broken right now. Either way, I made a repository of minion timeless jewels. Essentially an empty build where I um, invested into the relevant um, positions that we can reasonably well reach without um, investing too many points, um, excluding this one because it simply costs too many points to reach notables on average. For the other ones, the way this works is essentially there's a list of these elegant rubuses and you have to socket them into the into the socket that is next to the keynote. So for example, you would socket those elegant rubuses into this socket because it's next to mind over matter. And you can look at the um, notables that are being affected by it, right? And notables that are included, right, that I've, I've put a specific focus on are Axiom Warden, so minion max life, Slumlord, minion damage, um, Eternal Resilience, with which gives endurance charges on hit, or rather allows us to, to generate endurance charges every second if we've been hit recently, and also things like um, increased long curse aura effect. Obviously going to put the um, link to this repository in the comments below as well, in case you're wondering. Quick detour, but I think it's, it's um, well worth um, exploring, especially if you want to go this far into the build. Now, in terms of our utility minions, you should now be able to use a fourth spectre, as I mentioned earlier, right? Carnage Chieftain, Horse Chieftain, Crush Claw, and the Pale Seraphim, right? They all help you boost your damage significantly, you could, in theory, use an Arena Master instead of a Pale Seraphim, but I do think this is more optimal in terms of damage. And yeah. Our other utility minion, the um, AG, is now using even more expensive gear. Um, we kept the Crown of the Tyrant, but that's pretty much it. In theory, we should also keep the Gravebind. I gave my Guardian a Gravebind with Curse enemies with an Elemental Weakness on hit. In case you're wondering, this is where the Elemental Weakness in the video came from. The Guardian does override your mark. It's a bit silly, it helps with clearing. Um, and I, I simply never, never gave him a, a new Gravebind that didn't have a modifier, but you actually shouldn't get it, in my opinion, if you want to do um, bosses. I technically also didn't use a Legacy of the Fury in the um, in the footage, in case you're wondering where the Scorch modifier is. Um, as I said, I discovered this late in the league, which is silly, but it is what it is, I guess. Um, but you should definitely use one. It's a great addition to the build. 
as I mentioned earlier. I did, however, use a Kingmaker. The Kingmaker is, is pretty obvious. It gives our minions Culling Strike, and this one is actually very consistent because it's all of our minions. So essentially, once a boss drops below 10%, the next hit will kill it, which is very nice. Also gives our minions crit strike modifier. Um, it also gives our minions critical strike multiplier, which becomes relevant later on when you actually have a um, higher chance to crit. And it of course gives nearby enemies. And it of course also provides us with fortification. Now this is mostly for the minions. We usually aren't close enough. To actually get the fortification but you know it's still very powerful overall pretty good but also very expensive obviously and then last but not least the um the chest has received an upgrade as well and as you can see it's quite the upgrade it's an elevated explosion modifier which you can make by a by having a tier one explosion modifier and an additional crusader modifier on one item the base is at least 5 divs, and an Orb of Dominance only has a 50-50 chance to give you the right chest, right? the one with the elevated explode modifier. You don't need that chest, right? but personally I think this is a... This just rounds off our Orb build very well, makes the explosions so strong that you can even clear, let's say, high deadly maps like you saw in the footage. The other modifier is a Hunter modifier that gives our Guardians a lot of region. Um, it's not consistent, it's burst region, but for the most part it's more than good enough, in my opinion. The good thing is this elevated modifier sometimes end up the good thing about this modifier is that you can sometimes buy items with the elevated modifier because some players accidentally make those chests while trying to elevate a different modifier. One man's trash is another man's treasure, so to speak. In regards to those chests, if you roll one with resistance, make sure to transform it into fire resistance in case you ever want to attempt um, Searing Exarch, because for Uber Searing Exarch, your Guardian needs to have at least, let's say, 170% fire resistance to be safe. That's one thing. And the other thing is, if you have a free prefix, you can put on um, item drops on death if equipped by an anime Guardian. Um, as you can see, my prefix were full, which is why I didn't put it on. But in general, this is useful especially if you're doing um, Blight. Blight is one of the main sources of high-end Guardian deaths, which is due to the fact that sometimes Blight bosses are being, or rather their corpses, are being exploded by enemies, which deals a tremendous amount of damage. And if your Guardian is unlucky and doesn't block those explosions, it can simply disappear from those because they deal millions of damage, which is kind of crazy. I don't know why this is in the game, but it is what it is. Right? If you want to be on the safe side, don't do Blight with a Guardian this expensive. Or just don't use it, I suppose. But yeah. While being very expensive, this is a noteworthy addition, in my opinion. That's why I wanted to show you. In terms of um, the mapping setup, there aren't that many differences. Right? Personally, I like to use a Quartz Flask instead of uh, an Elemental Resistance Flask. And of course, Aegis Aurora. Aegis Aurora gives us a tremendous amount of energy shield recovery, which you also saw in the footage earlier. Um, in general, you, you can get Aegis Aurora as, as soon as you feel that your, your recovery is no longer um, enough. You don't have to wait on, on until the very late game. Right? This is obviously something you can, you can acquire early on, which is usually what I do, personally. It does cause damage, right? Swapping out a clay shaper, but it is what it is. It's well worth it while mapping, at least in my opinion. I think this is pretty much it. I hope you liked it. If you have any questions or suggestions, you can leave them in the comments. I'll try to get to them as soon as possible. 
and I guess see you in the next one.